Hey guys, this is chapter 14 of The Science of Getting Rich, and I will read the text and then have commentary at the end. Chapter 14, The Impression of Increase. Whether you change your vocation or not, your actions for the present must be those pertaining to the business in which you are now engaged. You can get into the business you want by making constructive use of the business you are already established in by doing your daily work in a certain way. And insofar as your business consists in dealing with other men, whether personally or by letter, the key thought of all your efforts must be to convey to their minds the impression of increase. Increase is what all men and all women are seeking. It is the urge of the formless intelligence within them seeking fuller expression. The desire for increase is inherent in all nature. It is the fundamental impulse of the universe. All human activities are based on the desire for increase. People are seeking more food, more clothes, better shelter, more luxury, more beauty, more knowledge, more pleasure. Increase in something, more life. Every living thing is under this necessity for continuous advancement, where increase of life ceases, dissolution and death set in at once. Man instinctively knows this, and hence he is forever seeking more. This law of perpetual increase is set forth by Jesus in the parable of the talents. Only those who gain more retain any. From him who hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. The normal desire for increased wealth is not an evil or reprehensible thing. It is simply the desire for more abundant life. It is aspiration. And because it is the deepest instinct of their natures, all men and women are attracted to him who can give them more of the means of life. In following the certain way, as described in the foregoing pages, you are getting continuous increase for yourself and you are giving it to all with whom you deal. You are a creative center from which increase is given off to all. Be sure of this. And convey assurance of the fact to every man, woman, and child with whom you come in contact, no matter how small the transaction, even if it be only the selling of a stick of candy to a little child. Put into it the thought of increase and make sure that the customer is impressed with the thought. Convey the impression of advancement with everything you do so that all people shall receive the impression that you are an advancing man and that you advance all who deal with you, even to the people whom you meet in a social way without any thought of business and to whom you do not try to sell anything. Give the thought of increase. You can convey this impression by holding the unshakable faith that you yourself are in the way of increase and by letting this faith inspire, fill, and permeate every action. Do everything that you do in the firm conviction that you are an advancing personality and that you are giving advancement to everybody. Feel that you are getting rich and that in so doing, you are making others rich and conferring benefits to all. Do not boast or brag of your success or talk about it unnecessarily. True faith is never boastful. Wherever you find a boastful person, you find one who is secretly doubtful and afraid. Simply feel the faith and let it work out in every transaction. Let every act and tone and look express the quiet assurance that you are getting rich, that you are already rich. Words will not be necessary to communicate this feeling to others. They will feel the sense of increase when in your presence and will be attracted to you again. You must so impress others that they will feel that in associating with you, they will get an increase for themselves. See that you give them a use value greater than the cash value you are taking from them. Take an honest pride in doing this and let everybody know it, and you will have no lack of customers. People will go where they are given increase, and the Supreme, which desires increase in all and which knows all, will move toward you men and women who have never heard of you. Your business will increase rapidly, and you will be surprised at the unexpected benefits which will come to you. You will be able from day to day to make larger combinations, secure greater advantages, and to go on into a more congenial vocation if you desire to do so. But in doing all this, you must never lose sight of your vision of what you want or your faith and purpose to get what you want. Let me here give you another word of caution in regard to motives. Beware of the insidious temptation to seek for power over other men. Nothing is so pleasant to the unformed or partially developed mind as the exercise of power or dominion over others. 
The desire to rule for selfish gratification has been the curse of the world. For countless ages, kings and lords have drenched the earth with blood in their battles to extend their dominions, this not to seek more life for all, but to get more power for themselves. Today, the main motive in the business and industrial world is the same. Men marshal their armies of dollars and lay waste the lives and hearts of millions in the same mad scramble for power over others. Commercial kings, like political kings, are inspired by the lust for power. Jesus saw in this desire for mastery the moving impulse of that evil world he sought to overthrow. Read the 23rd chapter of Matthew and see how he pictures the lust of the Pharisees to be called master, to sit in the high places, to domineer over others, and to lay burdens on the backs of the less fortunate. And note how he compares this lust for dominion with the brotherly seeking for the common good to which he calls his disciples. Look out for temptation to seek for authority, to become a master, to be considered as one who is above the common herd, to impress others by lavish display, and so on. The mind that seeks for mastery over others is the competitive mind, and the competitive mind is not the creative one. In order to master your environment and your destiny, it is not at all necessary that you should rule over your fellow men. And indeed, when you fall into the world's struggle for the high places, you begin to be conquered by fate and environment, and your getting rich becomes a matter of chance and speculation. Beware of the competitive mind. No better statement of the principle of creative action can be formulated than the favorite declaration of the late Golden Rule Jones of Toledo. What I want for myself, I want for everybody. So that was chapter 14, and um, one of the notes I made here in my margin um, was about the paragraph where he is talking about um, giving the impression of increase to basically everybody. Everybody you deal with in business, but everybody everywhere, because this is this is universal for creating anything, not just a business. Um, he says, um, you are a creative center from which increase is given off to all. Be sure of this and convey assurance of the fact to every man, woman, and child with whom you come in contact, no matter how small the transaction, even if it's only the selling of a stick of candy to a little child. Um, one of the things I love uh, in the book, the seven spiritual laws of success by Deepak Chopra is one of the things that he tells you to do, which is this. Basically, one of the things that you do to get increase to come to you, to get money to come to you in abundance, is every time you interact with somebody, you know, this is from Deepak, you give them a gift. So if you can give them something, a thing, then you do, even if it's only a flower, he says. Or if you can't even afford a flower, then all you do is give them a thought, a thought of increase. You could literally, every person you meet, you could literally think, uh, you know, as you're with them or as you're leaving them, I wish you increase. You know, I, I wish for this person to be blessed with everything. That's the impression of increase. And when you habituate that, it changes you. It changes you. Um, and he says here, you can convey this impression by holding the unshakable faith that you yourself are in the way of increase and by letting this faith inspire, fill, and permeate every action. So it radiates off of you. That's the other thing. Even if you don't do anything, even if you don't um, intentionally do something, which for, my, for me personally, um, between this book and the seven spiritual laws of success, which was another one that um, I read back in the day, you know, um, Anytime you can give to somebody else with this understanding that more life for all is more life for you and vice versa. Anytime you can give somebody else increase in some way, whether you, whether you give them something or you help them with something, you're sending out this message. You're essentially, you know, you're putting, you're just putting out this. I always thought of it as this is the way that I would word it to myself. I'm like, I am indicating to the universe that I am somebody who can handle this and you know whether you believe there's any universe listening or that's not relevant the point is essentially I was demonstrating to myself by taking that action whatever the action is whatever the action would be that I am ready to handle more and I'm doing this the right way and you know that type of thing and to me that's very powerful you can feel it after the fact. You can feel um, this this feeling like you know you're getting somewhere. You It increases your faith. It increases 
the feeling, the feeling that you're actually in that state that gets everything. And eventually the present moment turns into the present moment where you have all the stuff that you want little by little and you enjoy the journey along the way. Um, yeah, so that's, that was the first part I wanted to say. The second, you know, the the last half of this chapter is, you know, he talks about seeking power over other men. Um, if you're able to rise out of that, do that as quickly as you can. Nothing good comes of this. Um, nothing good comes of that. And when you are outside of, when you're large, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to claim that I'm completely above competition. I'm not, obviously. Um, but when you spend most of your time outside of competitive mind in the way he defines it, the things other people do start to look different to you. And you can see, you can see how even the people that seem like they're winning are actually uh, miserable and are, are playing this game that nobody can ever really win. And if you're, if you're in this frame of mind where, you know, you long to be the one in charge, you long to be the one on top with everybody else beneath you, um, if you can get out of that, great. If not, it might be one of those roadblocks that I've talked about on my YouTube channel. You know, you might have to, you might have to explore why it is that you, that you need that, that you feel that you want that. Um, there are usually reasons for that and sometimes they have to be cleaned out, but I can certainly say um, from my observation and experience that um, what he says here is true. Um, The mind that seeks for mastery over others is the competitive mind, and the competitive mind is not the creative one. You can't really master your environment and yourself if you're coming from that that point of view. It's, It's a prerequisite to to be free from that so whether you can do that or not that's for you to think about it is definitely it you know it's not optional it it might be optional when it comes to succeeding financially on the competitive plane like he says but to succeed on the creative plane where you become a creative um center as he was saying you can't be coming from the competitive mind you just can't that's this low level of animal competition and and you know the power struggles that are so familiar and the idea is to rise above that and become a creator um you know somewhere in the level of source so that's all i've got to say about chapter 14 i will be back soon with chapter 15